Welcome everyone to the Vote 2020 debates. This forum is being presented by Cape Cod Young Professionals, League of Women Voters of the Cape Cod area and the Cape Cod Community Media Center. The purpose is to provide objective nonpartisan information on our local elections for the benefit of Cape Cod voters. This event is being recorded. Before we begin a few housekeeping notes, please leave your mics muted during this event. We will try to get to as many questions as possible, but we may not have time for all of them. If you have any technical difficulties, please email lauren at capecodyoungprofessionals.org. And without further ado, please welcome Florence Selden, the moderator for these debates. Uh, thank you. Um, my name is Florence Selden, and I am from the League of Women Voters Cape Cod area and will be the moder moderator tonight for the um, three events that are being presented to give you, provide you information for the candidates who are running for state representative in three of our Cape districts. We will begin tonight with first Barnstable. Um, and um, the two candidates are Representative Timothy Whalen, Republican, who holds the seat currently, and his challenger, Josh Mason, Democrat. For your information, uh, first Barnstable District consists of Barnstable Precinct 1, Brewster Precincts 1 and 2, Dennis, Yarmouth Precincts 1, 4, and 7. The format for the evening uh, which the candidates have agreed to is that each candidate will have an opening statement of two minutes. Um, we'll begin that uh, alphabetically and then the closing statement in reverse order. Then I will be reading question, asking questions which have been submitted by uh, online to the Cape Cod Young Professionals and to the League of Women Voters of the Cape Cod area. And so with that, uh, if Mr. Whalen and Mr. Mason would unmute their microphones and also start their videos. Thank you. Um, I also will note that we will be getting, uh, there's a timekeeper who will hold up a 30 second sign and then a stop sign. And as I always say, I'll let you finish your sentence, but not your paragraph. So with that, we will start with uh, Mr. Mason for his two minute opening statement. Jo uh, do you mind if I call you by your first names or would you prefer your last names? Okay, Josh. First. <laughs> thank you, Florence. Uh, thank you very much. And thanks to all in the audience out there. Uh, thank you to Cape Cod Media Center, uh, League of Women Voters, CCYP. I'm Josh Mason. I grew up on Cape Cod and graduated from Dennis Yarmouth High School. I'm a bartender, a son, a brother, and an active member of our community that's concerned about our future. What I've been struck by is the frustra frustration of our residents, not being able to put food on the table for their families, unaffordable and unattainable housing for our citizens, the frustration of a four month economy that leaves our teachers and fishermen struggling to afford the basic resources and accommodations all year long that most take for granted. I've spoken to many people across the district that are suffering and I share their pain and frustration because I am one of them. Cape Codders are worried about their future, a reliance on a seasonal economy that has made the futures of young people uncertain, a collapsing local healthcare system that has put families' healthcare in danger, and the effects of climate change may drastically alter the place we call home forever. I'm running for state representative to ensure that the people of Cape Cod come first. Together, we must work to implement programs filled with opportunity for our locals, affordability for our locals and constructed by our locals. We must pass the Roe Act to protect reproductive health care, reinvest in local health care systems that support families and provide high paying jobs in our community and pass a Green New Deal to mitigate the effects of climate change on Cape Cod. This is my commitment to the great people of the First Barnstable District and I ask for your vote on November 3rd. Thank you very much. Thank you, Josh. Uh, Tim. Thank you, Florence. My name is Tim Whalen, and I'm asking for your vote for re-election to serve as your state representative in the 1st Barnstable District. I'm a husband of 30 years. 
I'm married to my high school sweetheart, and together we've raised two amazing daughters who both graduated from Nauset Regional High School, and then they went on to earn their bachelor's degrees, and they're now working in the private sector. Some of my fondest memories are the times I spend with my girls as I coach them in AAU and in high school basketball. Spoiler alert, uh, spoiler alert I am Megan Trainer's high school basketball coach. She's a good, good, good woman. Raising my family here on Cape Cod, I experienced firsthand many of the ups and downs our younger population faces. I've seen the needs of our hardworking public school educators. I've seen the need for resources to expand career opportunities and valuable training in good paying career fields so we can keep our young people here and make them feel they are invested in our community. I've seen the need for affordable and workforce housing so our children can stay rooted and raise their own families here on our beloved Cape Cod. I prioritize these needs and more in my tenure as your state representative because my wife and I are victims of the great Cape Cod diaspora. Our daughters live over the bridge where they went to find employment in their career fields. Our grandchildren will grow up many miles from Lisa and I and it breaks our hearts. So far, I've brought over $8 million into this district for the development of affordable housing. I help bring $25 million to Cape Cod Community College for a new science building and engineering building, which is under construction. I brought $44 million into the DY school district for a new middle school. All this and more, and we're just getting started, but there is more work to do. My name is Tim Whalen, and I humbly ask for your vote so I can keep fighting for you. Thank you. Um, each candidate, uh, Josh and Tim will each have two minutes to answer a question, uh, or if they are able to complete the question, the answer in less than two minutes and they want to respond to a previous question, add something, you're certainly free to do so. So we'll start with you, Tim. The first question is, what do you see as the most pressing issue facing Cape Cod today, and how would you address it if elected? if elected again. Sure, uh, thank you for the question, Florence. And that's a, that's a very, very good question. And I believe Josh and I discussed this in our last debate that we did last week. Um, it's, uh, it, it's kind of a dirty answer here. Uh, the most pressing issue facing Cape Cod right now is wastewater. Hmm. Wastewater is not only uh, is uh, the, the problem of uh, nitrogen overload and all the contaminants getting into our groundwater, not only is it an environmental crisis, but it's also a job creation and a housing creation crisis as well. It's very, very difficult to recruit year round employers uh, to come down here to the Cape uh, when they don't have a town, um, in most cases, they don't have town or city water to hook up to um, uh, for sep they have to run septic systems. When they built the Yarmouth Commons project on uh, Route 28 in South Yarmouth, I believe it was between 800000 or $1 million was spent simply for the septic system that they had to put in there for the 69 housing units. So what, uh, the people that I speak to that are in the housing production industry, the people that I speak to that are in private industry, I try and recruit uh, employers to come down here all the time. And what I keep hearing from them over and over again is wastewater. So what do we do to fix it? I've been working right along from the beginning with the, the towns of Dennis, Harwich and Yarmouth as they've been trying to form the Dennis, Harwich, Yarmouth of the DHY Clean Waters Community Partnership. I filed the bill that was signed into law by the governor earlier this year that is going to allow the, the uh, uh, town meeting voters in the three towns to go and vote um, whether or not they wanna join into this intermunicipal wastewater agreement that is gonna be critical to clearing up some of the wastewater issues and expanding housing uh, and job creation here on the Cape. And um, again, as I said earlier, we've got more work to do. I have a million dollar bond authorization that's set that I uh, was able to get in one of our last minute bond bills. Uh, so that's sitting right there, just waiting to kickstart uh, the DHY as soon as we can get it through. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Say, do uh, you want to repeat the question or are you okay with it? I'm, I'm good with it. I'm good okay. with it. Thank you. Uh, so yes, I, I agree that wastewater is a critical issue here uh, on the Cape, indeed. Um, certainly, you know, the, the, the Tri-Town Initiative and, and some of what they put in place to resolve it, it's a good start. But frankly, the economy is the most pressing issue uh, on the Cape. And it's how do we create an economy? Uh, wastewater is a part of that. Uh, which is why we need a larger scale sweeping infrastructure bill that's going to create jobs. One that is uh, contingent upon passing a Green New Deal. 
that will create jobs in the energy sector, that will create roadway jobs, that will create transit jobs and opportunities. Um, I have a plan to merge our community college with a school over the bridge uh, to focus on hospitality and build out university sized plans and go macro. Uh, you know, we need to merge our healthcare system with our education system. Uh, we need to expand our partnership with the Brigham and Women's Hospital. We need to make Cape Cod Hospital a teaching hospital. That is extremely important. And then we need to use all of our natural resources, which we already have. Not look at overdeveloping necessarily, but using some of the vacancies uh, and some of the pre-existing structures that we have in our communities, um, you know, and, and creating uh, housing uh, opportunities out of those. It's extremely important. And more importantly, let's get rid of the Comcast monopoly and focus on expanding Open Cape. Open Cape is a wonderful program that I think is just sort of sitting under people's noses and they don't realize uh, just how much bandwidth, uh, how much potential they actually have, but that is also a wonderful program. It's time that we focus on taking care of our own people and we gotta go big. 2020 is literally the year uh, for moonshot politics. And uh, you know we can't, we can't focus on incrementalism here. Uh, we're on the clock and time is running out. Thank you, Josh. All right, for the second question, we will start with you. Um, <clears throat> what specifically have you done to improve the quality of education and funding for schools in District 1? What, what have I done or what will I do? I'm sorry. Uh, well, yes, what have you done and what will you do <laughs> um, in your case? So, uh, so uh, I have, I, I have not been funding in the district yet, but as a state representative, I do have some plans to, to tackle that. Uh, one of my plans is to create something called a Cape Cod Community Fund. Uh, how do we fund the Cape Cod Community Fund? Well, it, it, it's sort of a groundbreaking idea uh, that I had, which will allow us to not have to go to the state and beg for funding. It'll allow us to actually create uh, uh, an economic fund here in the Cape for our people by our people, which is really unique. How we're going to accomplish that is, it requires a few dominoes to fall. We're looking at obviously the state's uh, acquisition of our bridges uh, it was extremely important to how we, how we uh, you know, incept this. Because uh, what the idea is, is to put tolls on the bridges and charge a nominal fee of $3 with an exemption for residents, exemption for people who work on the Cape um, and only charge those who are visitors. Uh, that will be a boon as far as creating uh, between 15 and $25 million um, in additional revenue just between uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day alone. We also want to look at putting an additional taxation on second uh, homeowners investment properties. Um, what we will then do is have a bastion of money in which we can reallocate to the education uh, system so that we can increase teachers aids, we can increase uh, teacher salaries, we can cut admin and focus on putting farms uh, onto, onto school campuses and also bridging that divide between uh, vocational schooling and public schooling. It seems that the, the current model of um, teacher to book to student uh, does not work as well as standardized testing. And we need to teach our kids proficiency and how to read a clock and how to balance a checkbook and how to use cursive again. These are all very important items. They're simple items um, and, and they should be applied and they will be applied in society. So with that said, um, we are looking to appropriate some of those funds and infuse our education system with them. Thank you, uh, Tim. Uh, good question, and uh, I, I really appreciate it. This uh, th this hits very close to home. Um, since I came into office, uh, I've been working very, very closely with our uh, school superintendents in Barnstable, DY, Nauset, Cape Tech, and as well as meeting with our, uh, uh, we, we, we can't forget our charter schools as well, uh, because they're all part of the mix that educates our next generation. And um, some of the things that I'm really proud of that I have accomplished is I worked toward um, and supported with my vote, the Student Opportunities Act, which helped increase. It was a, a groundbreaking update in legislation, 28 years in the making to uh, rework the chapter 70 formula and to get more money into our local school districts. Uh, I've been an advocate from the start to increase state supports and state, uh, state funding for regional school transportation. Now regional school transportation doesn't sound like this very sexy thing, but go check with our superintendents and they will tell you, particularly where three out of our four school districts are affected by it, 
um, this makes a really big impact in their budget. My first year, uh, I, I was able to leverage my relationship with the governor and get an additional $400,000 that year that was given to the Dennis Yarmouth Regional School District toward the uh, regional school transportation. Also able to leverage my relationships that I've built with the uh, folks over at the Mass School Building Authority to ensure that we, not only did we get awarded, but that we held on to during litigation a $44 million award for building a new Mattachese school, uh, middle school in the DY district, as well as working cooperatively in, bipartisan, in a bipartisan fashion with my colleagues to make sure that we got the highest reimbursement rate possible from the Mass School Building Authority so that we could build a new Cave Tech, which just recently opened. I drove by there just the other day and it looks fantastic. Uh, that in addition to serving on the Joint Committee on Higher Education, uh, and my work there, as I mentioned earlier, to get 25 million to four C's and 250,000 recently announced for expanded training and skills uh, for jobs at four C's. I'm proud of my list of accomplishments. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you get to start answer the next question first. Awesome. So here it is. Uh, different versions of a policing bill passed the Massachusetts Senate and House. Uh, the two bills specifically were H4860 and the Senate bill S2800. They've gone to conference committee. Could you describe, please describe your views on this bill and how the state of Massachusetts can ensure justice and accountability from law enforcement? Florence, um, I am assigned to that conference committee. Uh, the only thing that I can tell you on that because of house rules is when we had our very first meeting, uh, there was a vote that was held to uh, extend our conferences, our further conferences into executive session. Uh, I think we all know what executive session means, but that means that there, uh, there, there can be no discussion about our discussions outside of our group. Um, I voted against that because I wanted to keep all of our discussions public as I think they should be. I think transparency is important, um, but uh, I was voted down. And because of that, I cannot discuss anything further about this bill because uh, I'm bound very strictly by house rules and I intend to not violate them. Thank you. Oh, I understand Representative Whalen. Okay, Josh, do you have any comment on, on that policing bill? Yes, um, I don't support the legislation um, as it is. I'm, I'm looking for a stronger and a tighter bill, quite honestly. Um, I would like to see items in the next bill that ban chokeholds, that ban the use of tear gas, that abolish the qualified immunity mandate. Um, I wanna see some more funding uh, towards de-escalation and mental health, uh, implementing task forces within all departments relating to those items. And also we need to work on taking that cannabis funding out of there because law enforcement does not support any cannabis initiatives. So there should be no cannabis revenue going back into uh, the police reform bill whatsoever. Um, so I, I, you know, I would like to see items uh, such as those added into the next form of the bill. Um, and I would also like to see more of a cultural diversity mandate uh, with respect to hiring in police departments. I do think that uh, cultural diversity in departments is extremely important, as well as attaching a community policing component to that, that would enforce uh, our, our law enforcement agencies and our, and our police precincts um, to really emphasize uh, community policing, town hall style uh, question and answer sessions, get, getting to know who's in your community, um, you know, and I, being able to identify certain people that have certain repeat issues um, relating to mental health with substance use, repeat offenders, obviously uh, on a criminal scale. Um, it's very important to be, to be able to identify um, these individuals in the community. I work with the Dennis Police Department. I sit on their crisis intervention team. And while I'm more of an auxiliary capacity and I'm not um, at the grade that Mr. Whalen served, and I respect uh, the his time as, a, as an officer. Um, you know, I'm at least more in touch with what's going on. And I feel like our department is a model department um, with respect to some of the programs that they offer. And it's, it's just, it, it's, it's uh, in the personnel that our department uh, also was hired. Um, it, they're really doing a phenomenal job. So that's kind of where I stand uh, at this juncture with respect to police reform. Uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, our next question, uh, we'll start with you, Josh. How has COVID-19 shifted your priorities as a candidate in this race? What issue or need in our region has jumped to the top of your list since the onset of the pandemic? Huh. Well, um, 
you know, I, I, I'm going to say that my two top line issues still remain the most pertinent here, uh, economy and uh, healthcare. care, uh, you know, full stop. Uh, this pandemic has really been an expose in, um, in environments such as ours within our communities. I'm someone who works um, for a small business owner. I'm a bartender, so I work in hospitality, and I've been directly impacted uh, by this pandemic. I have been furloughed since the month of March, so I understand the economic pain of the situation and the gravity, the nature of it. Um, and the weight that it's put on me, um, having to make sacrifices and certain decisions about, you know, you got to rob Peter to pay Paul, that, that sort of uh, routine, correct? So, um, so with that said, you know, we need to look at creating, again, that 12-month economy um, and one that's self-sustainable, one that's everlasting, one that generates opportunities. And again, I'm not going to rehash some of the policies that I'm looking to implement to sort of structure uh, a new world order with respect to an economy here on Cape Cod, um, but it is vital. And one of the other components to that Cape Cod Community Fund that I had touched upon before is looking to when uh, small business owners move to the Cape um, after inception of their business, if they make good on their business loans within a few years, we're looking to completely pay off those business loans. So they can then take that capital and then reinvest that into either expanding the business um, or bringing other, uh, other outsiders in to, to sort of join, join a collaborative, if you will. Um, but, and then with respect to healthcare, again, we need more expanded services. Marginalizing maternity care, marginalizing pediatric care is not the route to go. It's not going to attract young families and it's certainly not going to keep young families here. We have to incentivize those things. We have to give them access to the things that need to be here on the Cape so that we are not pushing them over the bridge. Thank you. Uh, Tim? That's a great question, uh, Florence. And I know I keep throwing all sorts of praise at you for the questions, but- uh, <laughs> I they didn't make them up. <laughs> <laughs> well, your, uh, uh, the people who submitted them have come up with some really, really uh, poignant questions. And um, this thing here, let me tell you, when COVID struck, um, Boy, was it a, uh, serving in this office, was it a really, really tough time. Uh, everybody was scared. Um, business people were scared. Um, obviously everybody was scared as, with the health uh, complications that were associated with this. And uh, I'm proud of the work that I did cooperatively with my fellow members of the Cape and Islands uh, legislative delegation. Uh, we work wonderfully together uh, in a bipartisan fashion and we, had a number of, uh, we, we huddled together, Sarah Peake put together a bunch of uh, Zoom meetings for us so we could maintain communication. And we reached out immediately and we stayed in close contact with Cape Cod Healthcare right out of the gate. Uh, working with them, uh, finding out what their needs were, trying to um, impress upon uh, uh, the leaders in Boston, the need for PPE. It was like the great hunt for PPE from March until May, because uh, that's what we, what we were hearing from our healthcare professionals was uh, desperately needed. Then in the middle of all this, uh, my, my longtime chief of staff uh, moved on to, to a job in the uh, private sector. So she had to be replaced just as we started taking in the waves of the um, unemployment and the pandemic, pandemic unemployment applications. And people were coming to us, hundreds and hundreds of people were coming to us um, for constituent service stuff with uh, backlogs and they, were, uh, they, they needed their funds. So we did a lot of work there solving their problems. Uh, and then trying to, uh, the reason we have the Registry of Motor Vehicles Office open in South Yarmouth was because I was screaming like a banshee to get that open for service down here. And we were able to get that opened. Um, going forward, it's all about the budget. And we just found out recently that um, the uh, FY20 is closing out with only a $693 million deficit. We assumed it was gonna be somewhere in the area of 3 billion. So we're looking up. Thank you. Uh, the next question, uh, Tim, we will start with you, uh, and then we'll modify it a little bit for you, Josh. What have you specifically accomplished towards workforce and affordable housing, and what further steps can be taken to develop more affordable housing on Cape Cod, especially for young working families? Excellent. I think I addressed, I think I addressed this in my uh earlier remarks, how, how personal this is and how important this is. And I'm proud of the work that we've accomplished in this area. Uh, my office uh, working with um, uh, the, the secretariats in Boston and EOHED, we were able to leverage those relationships and get over $4 million in um, uh, tax 
benefits and grants for the construction of the Yarmouth Commons housing project, uh, which is opening up now. Again, 69 units of housing on Route 28 in Yarmouth. I just took in, uh, or we reported just in the past few months, $1.68 million is going to the town of Brewster for the development of, I believe it's 30, 30 units of affordable housing, rental housing. And it's important that we look at these things because there's a there's a giant gulf between rental housing and, uh, and, and home ownership. Uh, we got a million dollar grant for uh, Project Forward to develop housing for eight adults on the autism spectrum. Uh, we have much, much, much more work to do. Uh, and like I said, it's, it's in, in all honesty, it's all about the funding. But again, right behind the funding comes the issue I brought up earlier, which is the wastewater, because the wastewater just complicates and raises the price tag on these developments uh, to the point that it's it's not financially advantageous for a lot of um, uh, developers to come down here and put, put up these developments because they're just not gonna realize the return. So going forward, it's still gonna be the work that we're doing on affordable housing. And if there's one thing I've proven to have a talent for, a talent in the game, it's chasing down money, getting our tax dollars chasing them down up in Boston and dragging them back over the bridge for those projects that really matter for the folks down here. Thank you. Thank you. And Josh, I will just uh, mo uh, modify the question a little. Have you done anything uh, toward, uh, have you accomplished anything in previous mm -hmm. work or what you've done towards workforce and affordable housing? And then what steps, if you're elected, would you take to develop more affordable housing on Cape Cod, especially for young working families? Well, this is a, this is a great question, Florence. Uh, thank you for asking. So um, I'm proud to sit on the uh, Municipal Affordable Housing Trust in the town of Dennis, as well as represent the town of Dennis um, in, on the Barnstable Home Consortium. So I've been working in affordable housing now for a couple of years. Uh, one, one of the projects that I really, I, I put my blood, sweat and tears into was trying to pass uh, an accessory dwelling bylaw in the town of Dennis. I think that that is something that is needs to be more applicable to all towns uh, across the Cape. Um, you know, we need to be pushing for more laws, or, or excuse me, uh, more policies that will um, open up the market a little bit uh, safely, so that we can downsize individuals who are only occupying a small percentage of their home um, and putting them into small, uh, smaller uh, attachments. Uh, on their properties, um, allotting the larger structure to then be utilized by a family. Um, it's a wonderful way to attract younger families here and give them opportunities. Um, certainly creating uh, programs uh, that are equity-based, very similar to what Chatham is doing, where it's a rent to own um, a situation, uh, where a portion of the rent goes to the equity and then the downstroke of that property. Um, again, Re, uh, reworking some of the existing structures in our communities, some of the motels, some of the hotels, some of the abandoned uh, restaurants and, and again, existing structures and dwellings um, that could then be uh, redeveloped into housing. Um, those are opportunities as well that are, that are sitting there um, on the docket for us. Uh, and then the key component to this is for me, one of my signature uh, things is to repeal the 1994 Rent Controlled Zoning Act so that we can make zoning uh, more favoring to our communities so that we can create and generate more affordable housing policies. Uh, that's going to be key uh, across the Cape to sort of changing some of these bylaws and some of these policies that have already been implemented and are making it, um, are, are sort of stonewalling people from being, being able to have access to housing. Okay, thank you, Josh. I can't believe it, but the half hour of your time is just about up. So we're now ready for closing statements. And Tim, uh, you go first. Thank you very much, Florence. You did a great job. I wanna thank the League of Women Voters, Cape Cod, um, the Cape Cod Young Professionals and the Cape Cod Media Center for hosting this opportunity for Josh and I to discuss the issues and to help voters make an informed choice. I also wanna thank Josh for putting his name, putting himself out there uh, and running for public office, because that takes guts. And um, Josh, thank you for doing that. And it also forces me to raise my game. And that's always a good thing too. Um, my friends, we're in the midst of a very difficult time in the world. We have a polarized nation that's tearing itself to ribbons over national politics. Cape Cod is in the midst of a global pandemic that has deeply affected everyone from business owners to the recently employed and everyone in between, our beautiful Cape Cod community faces challenges from global warming to wastewater mitigation, 
from improving our transportation infrastructure to expanding job training and year round job opportunities. And let's not forget about access to high quality health care and child care. Among the central concerns we rightly bring up time and again are expanding access to affordable housing and further eradicating the addiction crisis that has ensnared too many people and too many families in its steely grasp. I'm proud to say that I have been leading from the front on many of these issues. I brought over $8 million in state funding into our district for affordable housing production and existing housing rehabilitation. Through community development block grants, I brought hundreds of thousands of dollars into the town of Dennis toward after school programs for children. And I worked with my colleagues to gain the YMCA a $1 million grant toward development of a child care center in Hyannis, which will serve many families in our community. I reached across the aisle to my Democrat colleague, Representative Paul Tucker, and together we filed the legislation which criminalized the trafficking of dangerous synthetic opioids. Governor Baker signed this into law, reducing their availability, and this is now saving lives. But we have more work ahead. My name is Tim Whalen. I humbly ask for your vote in this upcoming election, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Representative Whalen for his participation. I want to thank the League of Women Voters, the CCYP, and the Cape Media Center for coordinating and hosting our debate. And all the viewers who tuned in, thank you. Folks, I want to reemphasize that we are on the clock and time is running out. This is our opportunity to make a real difference, to build an economy that works for all Cape Codders all year round, that gives our public education system and our teachers, the funds and the resources to be successful, that ensures all Cape Codders have a roof over their head, that our children are fed, that our hospitals are offering all of the same services that are available in Boston. We will make sure those who live here part-time understand that they have to participate full-time and we are going to take care of our own. Being from Cape Cod, working in a part-time economy and devoting my time to unpaid public service and volunteerism has helped to mold me for this moment. If you elect me your next state representative, I promise to serve the entire community and to take back what is rightfully ours. I ask for your vote on November 3rd. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you. On behalf of the Cape Cod uh, League of Women Voters, a League of Women Voters of Cape Cod and the Cape Cod Young Professionals, I want to thank both of you we're in a, because it's so important, I think, as Representative uh, Whalen pointed out, that he has somebody, a challenger, so that the issues can be aired and the public will have the opportunity to make up their own minds. Both organizations, the Young Cape Cod Young Professionals and the Legal Women Voters of Cape Cod, believe in civic engagement and the expansion of voter participation. And you both have contributed to that tonight. So we thank you. We know this is a difficult time. We would like to be in the same room together rather than doing this virtually, but thank you both. Thank you, Florence. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Thank you for the time.